Hi Venus, I welcome you all for Ardent MDS. So the topic what we are going to see is about synthesis of urea. So the urea synthesis which occurs in four phases, transamination followed by deamination and in a deamination there is a synthesis of ammonia. This ammonia will be transported to liver for the synthesis of urea. So these are the four steps which occur. We will see one by one what are the important things which you have to know for your competitive exam. So the first step which is called as transamination. As the name says transamination, so those enzymes which helps for transfer the amino group that is called as transamination, transport the amino group. So this is carried out by an enzyme called as transaminase. There are two types of transaminase. Number one, alanine transaminase and number 2 aspartate transaminase. Alanine transaminase transport the amino group from an amino acid called as alanine so to the keto acid called as alpha ketoglutarate. Alanine transaminase transfer the amino group from alanine to alpha ketoglutarate. Aspartate transaminase which transfer the amino group from aspartate to the alpha ketoglutarate. So alpha ketoglutarate which got the amino group and later so this will be converted into so this is by help of an alanine transaminase it will be converted into pyruvate plus L-glutamate right here with the help of an aspartate transaminase it will be converted into oxaloacetate plus glutamate. So what you have to know here is the final product in both the processes glutamate. So why the glutamate is formed? Why not other things? Because the glutamate is the only amino acid which can go for oxidative deamination. So that is the second step. So here if you see the second step is called as deamination. As the name says deamination, the removal of amino group which is called as deamination. So there are two types of deamination mechanism, either oxidative mechanism or non-oxidative mechanism. So in case of oxidative mechanism or oxidative deamination, glutamate is the only amino acid which goes for oxidative deamination. So here glutamate which will be converted into alpha ketoglutarate plus ammonia. Ammonia is removed, so this is called as deamination. So the enzyme which helps for this is glutamate dehydrogenase. So the enzyme which helps for the glutamate to conversion of alpha theta glutarate and ammonia. So ammonia is synthesized. But non oxidative pathway also ammonia will be synthesized which is carried out by an enzyme called as amino acid oxidase. The most important thing is oxidative deamination and where this oxidative deamination occur that is again one of the important multiple choice question. Oxidative deamination which occurs in labor especially cytoplasm of mitochondria, mitochondria. Right. So once the where now where the ammonia is synthesized, ammonia is synthesized in mitochondria, right? And this ammonia which is very toxic. Okay, if it goes directly to the blood, it, it is very toxic. So it needs some carrier. Okay, so to reduce the toxicity, our body will do some mechanism. So this ammonia now joins with glutamate to produce glutamine. So the enzyme which helps for this is called as glutamine synthase. So now this glutamine which goes to the liver and once it reaches the liver again this glutamine will be converted into glutamate and ammonia right. So again the enzyme which helps for the conversion of glutamine to glutamine, glutamate is called as glutaminase right. So the ammonia for the transport, it just take glutamate as a transporter 
and it became glutamine. So glutamine is a non-toxic molecule which will be transported from various organs and finally goes to the liver through blood. In the liver, again this glutamine will be converted into the same process, glutamate and ammonia. Ammonia will be synthesized in the liver. And the next process is about urea cycle. So the ammonia which is produced in liver, okay, or which is associated with the carbon dioxide, which is associated with carbon dioxide and goes for urea cycle for the synthesis of urea. And urea cycle is one of the very important topic for the any competitive exam. They may ask some multiple choice question for you. So urea cycle which occurs in liver, there are totally five steps in urea cycle. Among these five steps, first two steps which occurs in mitochondria, the next three steps which occurs in cytoplasm. Right. So the ammonia which produced in deamination reaction comes to the liver which joins with carbon dioxide to form carbamyl phosphate. So the enzyme which helps for the carbamyl phosphate is carbamyl phosphate synthase. So there are two types of carbamyl phosphate synthase. So number one, carbamyl phosphate synthase one. Number two, carbamyl phosphate synthase two. And both are different. Carbamyl phosphate synthase one which is helps for the urea cycle for the formation of urea. Carbamyl phosphate synthase two which is involved in primidine synthesis. And in the first step, two molecules of ATP is utilized. And once the carbamyl phosphate is produced, it joins with one more amino acid called as arnithine to produce citrulline. So once the citrulline is formed by the help of an enzyme called as arnithine transcarbamylase, it goes to the cytoplasm. Once it goes to the cytoplasm, the citrulline joins with one more amino acid called as aspartate. So, and produces a molecule called as arginosuccinate. And the enzyme which helps for this is called arginosuccinate synthase. So, this arginosuccinate now which is converted into arginine. And just before that, you have to know here one ATP is utilized. But instead of ADP formation here, Arinosine monophosphate will be produced, meaning two high energy phosphate is utilized. Okay. If the ATP is converted into ADP, one high energy phosphate is utilized. But here the adenosine triphosphate which is converted into adenosine monophosphate, two high energy phosphate is utilized. And once the arginosuccinate is formed, it is converted into arginine by the help of an enzyme called as arginosuccinate lyase or arginosuccinate or with this here there is a byproduct is formed which is called fumarate this fumarate will goes to the TCA cycle and this arginine now converted into arnithine by the help of an enzyme called as arginase here one molecule of urea will be synthesized so this is how the urea cycle will be occur for the synthesis of urea so what are the probable multiple choice questions they may ask you or what are the important questions you have to know related to the urea cycle, transamination reaction and deamination reaction that we are going to see in your take home message. Right. Number one, what are the four steps which occurs in synthesis of urea? Number one, transamination. Number two, deamination. And number three, transport of ammonia because it is very toxic. So, it takes some amino acid for transport to the urea and finally urea synthesis will be occur. First step in transaminase, what is the enzyme which helps for this? Transamination which helps by transaminase. So, there are two types of transaminase, right? Aspartate transaminase and alanine transaminase. And what is the final product of transaminase? Glutamine, why right? only glutamine? Glutamine is the only amino acid which goes for oxidative to deamination. Number three, the third reaction is called deamination. So, which enzyme which helps for the deamination? Glutamate dehydrogenase. So, in the glutamate dehydrogenase and deamination reaction, an ammonia molecule is formed. This ammonia is very toxic. It cannot directly go to the organ by blood. So, it takes some amino acid to transport. Right? So, with the help of an amino acid, it goes to the 
building ore for the synthesis of urea. So this is again one of the important multiple choice question, which is the major organ which involved in synthesis of urea liver. Many of the students will go for kidney. Kidney excretes urea. Synthesis of urea which occurs in liver. There are some minor amount of urea will be synthesized in kidney and brain, but the major synthesis which occurs in liver. So again, what are the steps which occurs in mitochondria? The first two steps which occurs in mitochondria, the next three steps which occurs in cytoplasm. And there are some defect in urea cycle occur, right? So the first defect, block or decreased synthesis of carbamyl phosphate synthase 1 or absence of this enzyme which leads to the accumulation of ammonia. So this is called as hyperammonemia type 1. Hyperammonemia type 1. Defect in the enzyme ornithine transcarbamylase which again leads to the accumulation of ammonia which is called as hyperammonemia type 2. Right. And coming to the third one, decreased synthesis of arginosuccinate synthase, which leads to the accumulation of citrulline, which is called as citrullinemia. Defect in synthesis of arginosuccinase, which leads to the accumulation of arginosuccinate, which is called arginosuccinic aciduria. And defect in this enzyme called as arginase, which is called as accumulation of arginine which is called as arginemia. So these are the various defect in urea cycle which you have to know. Right. So based on that what we learned here in synthesis of urea we have to work out for some multiple choice question which was asked in previous exams and they may ask in next exams also. So the first question is about where the urea synthesis occur, where urea cycle occurs in. Urea cycle which occurs in only in liver. So the answer for this question is A. Right. And question number 2, this slight variation in the first question, urea is synthesized on all except, urea is synthesized by urea cycle and urea cycle which occurs in liver we studied but there are some amount of urea which occurs in even kidney and brain. So the except if they are both for, then we can go for split. But the major organ which involved in urea formation is liver. Suppose if they are given with the other option, we have to eliminate which is the exception. Right? And we are going to the third question. First carbon to urea comes from. Urea has one carbon and two nitrogen. And if we go through the urea cycle, so it has a this carbon is produced from the carbon dioxide, and the nitrogen which comes from one nitrogen comes from the ammonia, the other nitrogen which comes from the aspartate. Right. Question number four. In urea cycle, which defect is X-linked disease? There are so many defective enzyme synthesis which occurs in urea cycle. So either defect in synthesis of carbamyl phosphate by defect in the enzyme called as carbamyl phosphate synthase, which leads to the hyperammonemia type 1, or defect in ornithine transcarbamylase leads to the hyperammonemia type 2, or Defect in synthesis of arginosuccinate by defect in the enzyme called as arginosuccinate synthase or defect in the enzyme called as arginosuccinase or defect in this enzyme arginase. There are five defects which may occur among this defect in all the enzymes. The one enzyme which helps for the formation of citrulline that is called ornithine transcarbamylase. Which is the only enzyme defect is X-linked disorders. All the other enzyme disorders are autosomal recessive. Most of the enzyme disorders are autosomal recessive. Right, so coming to the question, they may ask you, in urea cycle, which defect is X-linked disease? Harnithine transcarbamylase is an X-linked disease. All the other enzymes are autosomal recessive disorders. Right, question number 5. Urea and Krebs cycle linked red where? Okay, right. So here, when you go for this urea cycle, 
here for the, during the synthesis of arginine there is a formation of molecule called as fumarate this fumarate will goes to the tca cycle right so answer for this is question is fumarate fumarate which synthesis in urea cycle goes to the tca cycle or cut cycle right question number 6 oxidative deamination occurs in deamination which occurs in mitochondria especially in cells okay so we can eliminate the first option and third option we can go for either second option fourth option because both are mitochondria again coming to the mitochondria of all cells or mitochondria of the hepatocytes deamination which occurs only in the liver so mitochondria of the hepatocytes so these are the questions which was asked in previous exams they may probably ask you in next exams also so hope this video will be helpful for you we are very happy to help you in case you have any doubt kindly give me a helpline